A, B, G. Can you tell them what that means? A, B, C, D. Can you tell them what that means? C, D. A, B, G. A bad, a baddie girl. Aliens, bad girls. <laughs> Aliens and bad girls? Anything but ghosts. Televisa presenta Because I know you guys watch these videos at 3 in the morning to get scared and then you blame me because you get possessed If an alien gets you then you can blame me This, is from, <laughs> this is from Annette Hello, I'm Annette Just Stories Annette or Annette? You said the same thing <laughs> Hello, I'm Annette I saw the video of you guys talking about the duendes My dad told me that when he lived in Mexico One day he came home tired from work He played in the hammock Hamaca Hammock They said hamaca Hikama? Es una rutina buenísima Se llama hamaca G And then he felt something swinging him. He said when he woke up that he saw the duendes pushing him. <laughs> what the f There was also this one time when I went to Mexico. I was four. My uncle and aunt went to a bar. My other cousin who was around nine and I took care of their baby who was a couple of months old. We got bored all alone in the house. The baby was asleep. We wanted some candy too. And there was a store nearby so we went. We were out for like five minutes. We came back and the baby wasn't on the bed. We freaked out and we looked for her for two hours. My uncle and aunt came back and we told them everything. They also freaked out. Not as much as my cousin and I. While looking for the baby we heard some faint crying but we didn't know where it was coming from. My older cousin checked in the bathtub and screamed like she was being stabbed. My aunt was next to her. She didn't make a sound because she was in so much shock. Me and my uncle ran to them, but I noticed something from the corner of my eye moving. I didn't really pay attention to it because when I entered the bathroom, the baby was full of scars and bruises. There was also a mark of a tiny hand by her neck and back. My cousin and aunt said that they saw something that was little near her. I couldn't take it anymore. I was freaked out to the point that I left Mexico. I told my dad about it and he called to make sure everything was okay with the baby. And I heard they took her somewhere to check what was happening and I heard them say, El Duende Malo. I have I haven't spoken to them and I haven't gone to Mexico since then. I saw a story like that on TikTok though. The mom left them to pick up their little brother across the street and when she came back like she couldn't find the baby and then she called her dad and her dad was like yelling. They ended up finding her like in, the, in somewhere where they had already looked. They said it was something about the one this. Remember when my mom lost you and she couldn't find you, she couldn't <laughs> find you and then you were like on the side of the bed? <laughs> I should have stayed there. We are real bit. I was trying to speak alien. <laughs> Chill! <laughs> into the wall. Oh, I remember my father pushed me to the floor when I had a pointy ass kebab <laughs> steak because she ate a f***ing cake that caramel liked. Because you didn't tell me. I was just f***ing playing. I had a sharp ass object. I could have stabbed the back of the I didn't know. <laughs> There was also a time when I was little. It was snowing here in Washington. My house had a sliding door back then. I was around 9 or 10 in my neighborhood. We were all Mexican and there isn't anyone old that lives here. I was looking out the door to see the snow, then went out and I saw two old men far in the shadows walking. I didn't pay much attention but they called my name out and like the good girl I was, I didn't look or talk to them. But what triggered me was that one of them said Angelita. My mom's name is Angelica and they say I look a lot like her. And the only person who called me that was my dad's dad. My grandpa who I never met. I was born on February 2004. My grandpa died two months later. I never met both of my grandpas. I ran away because I was scared something would happen. That night, I had a dream it was both of my grandpas. My dad's dad said hi. And told me ho. He called her ho? Oh. <laughs> how, how he, how before he died, oh. he always called <laughs> told me how before he died, he always called me on the phone to hear me cry or laugh and that he was happy to see me all grown. And my other grandpa said sorry that he couldn't be there to meet me and for not being there for me. After that, they both warned me that something was going to happen to us and that we might get hurt and that I have to stay strong. That whole week, so many of my family members died. Nobody knew why my dad's family was damaged the most. We went through mental breakdowns. We wouldn't want to eat to the point where my dad wanted to kill himself. I had another dream of my dad's dad. He said something about brujería. I told my dad and we went to get checked. It turns out my mom's ex-boyfriend for more than 20 years ago wanted to make my dad suffer because he took my mom away from him and he wanted her back and he was going against me and my brother who was a couple months old. We all got cured and everything but after that I never had a dream of my grandpa's. That is That's crazy. Good. Like get the f over it. We had a Come long on. time to get over it. Well they said sorry if I misspelled some words. Aww. We love you. What is this? We they brought Monica. a block of cheese and some Ritz. It's a cheese platter. What is that name that they give it? The fancy name? Cheese platter? Oh yeah. 
This one is from Jasmine. This all happened when my mom was a teenager. She would constantly hear things in her house in the night, like dishes moving and heavy footsteps. Her and her mom are religious, so they would always pray when they would hear things like this. She also said that she would hear animal sounds in her mom's friend's house, like goats when they didn't even have a rancho, which are satanic animals. She told me her mom would always complain about feeling pins and needles around her body. My grandpa or her dad was known to have other girls around the pueblo other than my grandma. One day, my mom and her siblings were walking in a cemetery and they found almost like a voodoo doll, like something a bruja would leave when doing brujeria. They found my grandma's face on the doll and had a bunch of needles around it, which could explain why she was having the sensation of pins and needles. It was speculated that one of the girls my grandpa would be with got jealous over my grandma and did brujeria on her. We never knew what type of brujeria it was, but she ended up passing before I was born during surgery after she got really sick. We don't know if the brujeria has something to do with that, but brujeria scares the crap out of my mom till this day. I've gotten so many messages from people that their grandma grandparents have died because of brujeria this one i thought was very interesting he titled it the girl at the table slash the omegle witch warning this story gets pretty dark brief mentions of suicide and eating disorders i'm saying fudge so we don't cuss okay my name is jay please keep me anonymous sorry my name is x and your content is basically all I watched during the pandemic. So I thought I'd send in my own paranormal experience. In the summer of 2017, two of my cousins moved back in with their dad in my hometown after living with their mother for a few years. They never really got along with their stepmom, so we would hang out almost every day while my uncle was at work. My parents worked early in the morning, and we were loud-ass Mexican teens, so they rarely let them spend the night because our laughs would keep them up until sunrise. One Friday, my parents were in a pretty good mood. My cousins were over, and they didn't feel like going home, so I made them ask my mom if they could spend the night. Diaz never say no to primos. Y'all know the trick. And she gave them permission to stay. We stayed up pretty late talking to people on Omegle when we reached a girl doing tarot readings. At that point, I had been doing tarot readings myself, but I definitely was no expert. This girl had an intricate altar set up behind her, so we were immediately intrigued. The girl's mic was off, so we were waiting for her to type out questions for us. She asked for my name, birthday, and hometown. Looking back, she really only needed my name for a tarot reading. I didn't think twice and just gave her the answers. She wrote something down before flashing a symbol at her camera and ending the chat. I knew enough about the occult to know she flashed some sort of sigil, but I didn't know enough to know what it meant. However, I knew that something really bad had just happened. I felt a knot in my stomach and instantly started to regret giving her my information. I didn't want to freak out my cousin, so I just brushed it off and we continued. A few hours later, we were trying to go to sleep and my cousin kept turning the light on. I can't sleep with the light on, no matter how terrified I am. So the three of us kept switching my lamp on and off. I got really irritated after a while, so I stormed out of my room and decided to sleep in my living room. The dining hall and my living room are separated by a huge archway so I could see directly into the dining room as I was laying on the couch. I noticed the black figures sitting at the end of the dining table with their back facing me. I was half asleep so it took my eyes a few seconds to focus on what I was seeing. I felt like I stared at it for hours but it was realistically only a minute. The figure was hunched over almost as if it was resting its head on the table. As I remained frozen my eyes started adjusting to the dark and I was terrified to fully see what was sitting at the table. It started to make small twitchy movements. I was praying that it was my mom or sister knocked out on the table, but my sister was out with friends. A few seconds later, my mom walked out into the living room. ¿Qué chingados estás haciendo? Ve a tu cuarto. ¿Por qué dejaste a tus primos solos? I was too tired to explain what I saw. I felt drained, so I stumbled back to my room and knocked out without telling my cousins what I saw. I definitely kept the light on that time. I honestly don't know if what I saw was real. According to my mom, she did find me in the living room, but she never looked into the dining room. Looking back, that summer was one of the darkest times in my life. It was full of death. One of my closest middle school friends live streamed her car crash and showed the body of her dead sister. Tonight, a teen driver in California is facing charges after police say she live streamed the crash that killed her own sister. I was one of the first people to see it. A few weeks later, that same summer, my friends and I survived a shooting at a park the day before the 4th of July. It didn't help that I was moving away from my freshman year of college later in the fall of 2017. I was in a really bad mental place throughout my fall quarter. I was severely depressed, had developed an eating disorder, and when I was considering taking my life, I was told that one of my classmates from high school had just done the same. Seeing the way it affected people completely changed my mindset, and I immediately got medical and spiritual help. I don't know what the girl on Omegle did to me that night. What I do know is that it was very 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 dark oh yeah. no i thank the universe every day for keeping me alive and they linked the video click on it Thank we're you. so happy that you're alive and we're thankful for your presence and you matter so much please in. stay in. thank you if you guys need help i'll link down below Who if you're sad you like can it. message any one of us yes
Lisa from Nana. <laughs> Hello, I am 10, almost 11. I've been believing in aliens for four years or more. It took me a while to realize this was real, not just dreams. I have something to say. This is not a ghost story, but an alien one. When I was four to five, I had dreams of aliens for one year. Each day, the dream became scary. First night, the alien made everyone stay inside and we had to give them food to let us out. This one wasn't scary. This one was around the middle of the year where they got scarier. They had killed half the people in my old apartments. It was just me, my friends, and my family. The next night of this, I had a dream that the aliens got in a car and ran over my friend's brother. I had witnessed the whole thing. It's something I wished I never dreamed of. He was one to three years old around this time. The last dream, this was the scariest. The aliens were leaving, but they were not going to leave without leaving a mess. They had broken my dad's car window. I woke up and my dad's window was broken, shattered everywhere. These are the only dreams I can remember, only the alien ones. They have been recent alien sightings and all I can say to my family is I told you. Also, they chanted my name and lured me to go outside and they could have killed me, but I never went out. She's the chosen one. Stop! Yeah. Whatever religion you are, pray that you're protecting the alien. They're like, I don't believe in God, bitch. Somebody said, how the f did the dog footprints get on the TV? <laughs> My house is under construction. So I had the TV on the floor. Is that the, the first time out. you talk? What is that? Because I feel like people thought that you just lived like this. My house is much worse. And then we got the roof fixed. Now we're getting all these walls were replaced. But we stopped because of Corona. My name is, in parentheses, not real name, Lala. Okay, so this is an alien kind of stuff. It's not a big deal or scary, but still weird. My mom used to work in an office, less than 20 people in that area. The point is, she was on the eighth floor. I remember going to her work a lot of times. One time, she comes home and tells me that she saw a UFO, but she immediately says that it was aliens. She's all excited. Obviously, I didn't believe her, taking into consideration that I was in the fifth grade, but she insists and insists, telling me that the whole area saw it, that they were watching it through the window, etc, etc. I then tell her that it could have been a plane or any other stuff and that it was crazy that she didn't have any picture of it. Later that day, or the next day, one or the other, she calls me and tells me I have a picture of it, and then proceeds to show me the picture. I try to look at it in an abnormal way, hoping that with luck, that way I can make it look like a plane or something else, ironically. Because that stuff in the picture was not a plane at all. It was round, and it had a silver-like color. I don't remember it having lights though, so I assume it didn't. But I swear that thing wasn't a plane. No matter how I thought of it, it was impossible for it to be a plane or a f helicopter. It looked like the typical UFO sh I remember this event because I told my best friend from school and remember looking at the sky more often for the next few days. Okay, so we have a picture of it. I saw it and blah blah blah. So where is it, you are asking? If this wasn't weird enough, it gets even weirder. Either a weird coincidence or I don't know. In the present day, I remember this experience and decide to ask my mom about it. And I tell her how she told me and everything and how crazy of an experience it was and about the picture and how the thing looked. And she says, picture? I never had a picture of it. I was like, okay, she forgot. Because she usually forgets things she doesn't give more attention to. And then I told her how I did didn't believe her when she told me because she didn't have a picture of it and how she shut me up when she showed me the so-called picture but she said the same thing that she didn't remember having any picture of it i insist telling her how the picture was in the white phone that had a transparent case that phone is imprinted in my mind due to personal experiences and she was still saying that she didn't remember the picture that she didn't remember having it or how the thing looked she said that she remembers when and the area she saw it in but think about it you your person yourself is doing their business at work the whole area where you work at on that floor is looking through the window because there's a UFO outside. You see it and you remember it. And then later you actually have a picture of it. You have a picture of it. Would you forget about that? Of course not. People remember more stuff and experiences when there are emotions attached to it. I don't think you'd be able to forget about it. Either I hallucinated that photo or my mom completely erased that from her head. You know what that reminds me of? Men in Black is a movie starring Will Smith about entangled. I'm, um... Men in Black is a movie about secret government agents who police alien refugees living on Earth. These agents have advanced technology to fight intergalactic terrorists, including a memory racing neuralizer. It's based on what is rumored to be a real life secret government agency that deals with all things extraterrestrial, except their only goal is to keep anything related to the matter hidden. These men are always dressed in a black suit and tie and have a history of shutting down any extensive alien research done by the public. One day, a man named Paul Miller was driving home when he witnessed a flying saucer crash into an empty field. Two humanoid figures emerged and he immediately pulled out his gun to shoot, ultimately injuring one of them. He booked it and suddenly realized that he had lost time, that hours had gone by from when he had seen the crash but he shrugged it off. The next day, he went to work and was confronted by three men in black suits who insisted that they have his file and they know all about what happened when he told no one of the event the night before. They warned him that it would be in his best interest that the encounter be forgotten.
forgotten. The possibility of extraterrestrials having memory racing technology is not far-fetched. They probably do that. They probably erase any evidence that they were ever there. Your mom needs to take um, Jingo below below them. I don't know what that is. Don't listen to her. I believe you. <laughs> you know, if your memories, if you remember them in third person, they're not real memories. Two. This story is shorter, like really short. My parents used to fight all the time. I was in elementary school, either third or fourth grade. The point is that it was dinner. They gave me the food and told me to go to my room. They were fighting. You could hear even with the door locked. I was chilling, eating my food, all the screaming, talking outside when suddenly I hear La la, la la, la la, in a playful way. This is in a playful it. way. La la. Scary. Does that help you <laughs> yes. with the story? Yes. And I got the sensation that whatever was calling me, it wanted me to find it. My heart dropped, obviously, but I was like, it's probably them. I have the same name as my mom. So I thought, oh, my dad is saying her name, and it is sounding like that because they are fighting. All of that in like a second. I opened the door, but they were still calling my name. I got my head outside of the room for a sec and noticed that they were still talking, but the voice wasn't coming from them. And then I noticed that the voice was muffled. <laughs> And it was coming from my left side. It wasn't far, but it was not right next to me at least. My head was still out of the room, so I thought, oh, it's coming from outside the window, the window in the living room. I decided to ignore it. It stopped, and I continued eating. Ignoring the fact that I had a window in my room next to my bed on my left side, I still can't explain that. I do not understand people who don't believe in aliens. There's actual scientific evidence that the universe is infinite. Even the CIA said that aliens were real. The Navy has a video of UFOs. They're just way smarter than them. Maybe because they created them. So I saw a meme saying like, oh, y'all really think that our aliens want us? The aliens were like, clutch your purse, we're about to pass by Earth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I really truly believe that alien made us and we're like their TV show. Mm -hmm. Like each family is like a channel that they watch. They're just seeing me picking my ass. <laughs> they have that smell feature on their TV. I'm gonna say this again in case you guys haven't watched the uh, alien video that we did. Canada's former defense minister, Paul Hellyer, is the first high-ranking politician to be publicly vocal of the Illuminati and the existence of extraterrestrial beings living among us. He claims the government purposely covers up information and to have personally witnessed a UFO himself. Look, you either have to believe the liars or believe me. And that's your choice, because I'm telling the truth. And that's the only reason I'm here, and I don't get paid for it. Apparently, the U.S. military has discovered new forms of energy from alien technology that can combat climate change, but instead has been used to prepare weapons against them in case of an intergalactic war. He says that aliens have the capability to save our planet, but we're pretty much too stupid and war-hungry to handle their technology. According to Hellier, there are 80 different species of aliens, and they've been visiting our planet for thousands of years. They look just like us. Enough that we wouldn't be able to recognize them if they merely passed us by on the street. And apparently in 2012, two Callejera aliens went to Las Vegas dressed up as nuns to shop and left undetected. He also describes three of the alien species by name. Tall whites, short grays, and Nordic blondes. That's kind of racist, honestly. And we can thank them for the invention of the microchip, Kevlar vests, and LED lights. Though most species are friendly, there are two to three species that are not. I had to delete my comment on your TikTok saying that you have a buff-ass forehead because nobody liked it. I felt really mean. Buff-ass and garlic grip toes. Show them your pinky toe, bitch. Don't be shy. Okay, so we are out here. I'm scared. Oh my god! Nelly! <laughs> You're too short. Okay. But you don't go on the camera. No, it is 2.53 a.m. Almost 3 in the morning. I've been editing all night just for you guys. Yeah, she's bald and ready. Like, so my foot butt. As I've discussed, I'm gonna pee myself. We can, we can communicate with aliens telepathically. What I want to do really quickly is try to get any kind of activity. Because the last time we tried to do this, remember? We were here with Lupita and Kane, and then we were trying to contact aliens, and then out of nowhere we just saw like really quick flashes of light, like little comets, but, but very, very close. So now we wait, focus all your energy, Nelly. I'm breathing really hard on the mic. But I heard something. Oh, it's leaves falling, not even me, bitch. <laughs> You're gonna ward them off. Um, if you could show yourselves. I do not invite you to take any of us. Why the f are their kids awake right now?
You heard that? No. That's a spirit. We're not talking to you. I know. Sarah. Mind your business. Sarah, back up. Oh, I'm scared, actually. Stop! You <laughs> scared me. I'm gonna run mom, inside. My mom is always here when suddenly she hears something. Stop! <laughs> Mike, I will pants you. We'll, we'll rescue you from Area 51. Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> We're just full of peasants over here. Stop that, really! Go, go, go! Go, 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 go! I'm scared. <laughs> Cut the cameras. Dead ass. You can't live with us, aliens, if you're watching this. It'd be funny if you dressed us up and took us to your. And what? Play with us? You fing weirdo? <laughs> like Barbie. I wonder what their beauty standards are. Big eyes and small noses. You have to be eyes skinny as hell. Y'all are roasting them. I'm like really hungry. <laughs> I didn't say that to me. Hi, Monica. I would like to stay anonymous if you decide to read the story for your video. Thank you. A few years ago, I used to live in Palmdale in the middle of nowhere. It would be really creepy at night, and even if there were street lights, it felt like it wasn't safe to walk out at night. But I feel that's pretty much everywhere. The Antelope Valley is literally in the desert, and at the time, in the area that I lived in, there were only a few streets that surrounded us. My house wasn't that big. There were only three rooms and one bathroom. My room had a huge window next to my bed, but I never slept with the curtains open. Like I said, at night, it would be so dark that it would feel eerie to even look out at them. I never liked looking outside windows in the dark because I was afraid there could be something or someone watching me. One night it was Sorry. One night, it was late and I was looking up through my phone. I had my dog sleep with me and I didn't think much of what happened next. I turned my phone off and decided to go to sleep. It was 2 a.m. Before I started falling asleep, my window was starting to sparkle. Little gleams of light were getting brighter and brighter. It felt like it was going in a circular motion. I didn't know what was going on. There was no sound, no people, nothing. Only the lights. My neighborhood was always quiet at night, so this was very odd. They were getting brighter and I just stared at my window. It was covered with a curtain, so all I could see was the lights going through the fabric. I felt like it was getting closer and my dog started growling at the window. I could hear a faint breeze but it sounded like it was being forced by something. I felt like I knew what it could be and I quickly got up to turn on my lights. I stood there for a minute and didn't hear anything. Finish it. People love to hear you read. It was complete silence. <laughs> With that thought in mind, I ran to my brother. You sound like some of y'all are about to be real <laughs> mad at me. It was complete silence. At that moment, I knew it was something strange. Usually, you're never wrong when you encounter something unusual. That gut feeling made me feel like I wasn't safe. I watched the stories on YouTube where alien abduction can happen so quickly. You can be gone and back and you won't even know. Usually, only time can tell how long you went missing. With that thought in mind, I ran to my brother and sister's room because they too had the same window as I did and it was directed the same way as mine. They were there, safe. I checked my parents and they were there too. Everyone was asleep, but I wish they knew what I had seen. I couldn't sleep for weeks after that night and the thought of it still keeps me awake sometimes. Alien abduction has always been a huge fear of mine. Movies like The Fourth Kind, Dark Skies, and Fire in the Sky always set a fear in me that alien abduction can happen to anyone and anywhere. That is so scary. Remember, I would always be like, oh, alien should abduct me and give me like plastic surgery and I'll be like a test or something. You know? That was weird. You said I could say it. You made me feel like I was safe telling you. <laughs> you like weird bitch. ass bitch. I wouldn't trust aliens with plastic. The story said story now for nice. alien beauty surgery. I don't know why that was funny. Their blood is like O negative. Doesn't your husband have O negative? His O positive. I have D plus. But you have D minus. <laughs> Hi, my name is Giselle, but I prefer to be called G. Another one? Remember this? Oh. Did I already say this? Yeah. No, it was G. No, it was not J. 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 I mean, no, I only remember that it was J because I was thinking about the letter after. Like this, she, she should, and she called them X. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. JK. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, JK. I'm gonna be. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, I was thinking like 
on the spot. I wasn't counting. <laughs> I wasn't counting. I said JG. Hi, my name is Giselle, but I prefer to be called G. This story of mine isn't scary, but I thought I would share it either way. And also for you to read it as a break from all the scary ones you probably read so far. Well, my story starts from nine years ago when I went to Mexico for the first time. Me, my sister, and cousins were at a basketball field watching our cousin play. We got bored, so we decided that it was a good idea to go into the field of thorn trees behind the hill of the basketball court. The top of the trees covered the sky, so basically we were surrounded by these thorn trees. We didn't think much of it because we were like 7 to 11 years old at the time and we were just being kids. We were really deep inside when all of a sudden I accidentally stepped on a thorn from a broken piece of branch. What was worse was that I was wearing sandals, so I went through my sandals and poked the bottom of my foot. It was hurting so badly that I was crying and I looked at my foot and it was bleeding like crazy. My sister and cousins didn't know what to do, so I told them to get paper and some water. I was left alone with my sister and they were taking forever. I tried to get up and walk on my own, but the pain was too much. I couldn't even take a step forward. Once my cousin came back, they said that they couldn't find anything to help clean the blood from my foot and sandal. Then my cousin started to help me up and helped me walk out from the trees. Once we made it out, all of a sudden, I felt this really strong wind that lasted a couple of seconds. Once the wind stopped, my foot didn't hurt anymore. There was still pain, but I was able to walk on my own. Once we walked to one of my cousin's cars, I looked at my foot and there was no sign of blood from my foot, like I was never bleeding. I was able to take out the thorn from my foot and sandal. When we got home, I asked my cousin and sister if they felt the wind when we got out of the trees, and they said that they didn't feel anything at all, that there was no wind at all. I was shocked because I swear to God that I felt the wind and I saw the trees move with the wind, but they said that they didn't feel anything. When I came back home from Mexico, I told my parents and aunt the story of what happened with my foot. They believed that it was my grandfather who was the wind, like he was protecting me from being scared and to let me know that everything was okay. I never got the chance to see my grandfather since he died when I was six, but I still talked with him over the phone. To this day, I still believe that it was my grandfather that was with me that day and never left me alone. He was my guardian angel and I will never forget that. P.S. I really love your videos. I love all your friends and family because they are so funny and relatable. We love Thank you. you. Love you too. Hey, that was a very beautiful story. What is the rosa de Guadalupe? Like that. Monica is the guy riding the bike in the rosa de Guadalupe intro. We got a photo here. Nelly, when did you post this? You post this picture. That looks like you. No, that's me. You first of all, I gotta say that I love y'all and your content is the only reason I'm watching YouTube. I can already see that y'all are going to get famous. Thank you so much. I love you. Hey Monica and her crew. This is Ilema. This is a story when I was back in my homeland, Dominican Republic. I feel bad for the people who are panicking because of the UFOs. The Office of Naval Intelligence released a report to a Senate committee outlining spending on the UFO program. According to the report, the unit is tasked with standardizing the collection and reporting on on sightings of unexplained aerial vehicles. Some people really think we are the only species in the entire universe. Sad. It's not like all of them are bad. I remember when I was around 7 to 8, it was New Year's in Dominican Republic, and you know Dominicans, they celebrate it all night long. I used to live in a house with two levels, and we were in the balcony watching the fireworks, when we noticed three little look-alike circle lights in the form of a triangle going by. At first we thought it was planes, but that's impossible because they were too close to each other, meaning they would crash. We realized that later. Then randomly they would disappear in a cloud. We were like, well, that's suspicious. Then we see another triangle disappear in the same cloud. You know, if it was a plane, it would pass the cloud and you would see it, but nope. Years pass and I'm still curious and look for some documents and find out that some species like fire and like that energy. And since fireworks have to do with fire, they were attracted to it. Planes, but that's impossible because they were too close to each other, meaning they would crash. We realized that later. Then randomly, they disappear in a cloud. Stop! What, what are you guys it? doing? <laughs> <laughs> See, you're looking at Nelly, try not to laugh. I barely looked at her right now, and then you looked at me. Look at this one again. <laughs> you think you're a fucking dog? <laughs> Not even days later, my aunt comes and tells us a story about her experience with one of them. This one she told us about was 7'5 and blonde. 
She told me it was the most beautiful man she has ever seen in her life. Till this day, I ask her and she still says he was the most beautiful man she's seen. To be exact, he visited her two times a week at night for three months. As she says, they were talking about how it is on the outside and how there's so many different species. There's the one that looked like monsters, like the emoji. They are very gorgeous to me! And the ones that look like humans, like him, but that they are superior to humans. And when it comes to technology, they are so advanced that you don't even imagine. Warning, this is not to scare you or anything. It's not fake. Because why would I make something like that up? By the way, they are not talking like normal people. They use telepathy. He only used to talk to her in her dreams. He would only appear in her dreams. Well, he basically fell in love with her. And then she said that it had to stop because he was an entity not from this world. The last time she saw him, he told her that she was growing breast cancer. That was the last thing he told her before he never saw her again. Believe me or not, when she went to the hospital, they saw the little ball that women get when it starts to spread. It basically saved her life. They did surgery on her on time and till this day she has a surgery scar on her right breast. Till this day she thinks that he erased some of her memories but didn't erase them all because he didn't want her to forget him. When I tell people the story they don't believe it and that's probably because they are too scared to know the truth. There's already enough evidence coming out that the government is trying to delete but it's too late. Well I'm a nerd and I do a lot of research about stuff like this and I came to a theory that their hiding base is in the Bermuda Triangle. The search falls in the area of the fabled Bermuda Triangle made famous in 1945 when five Navy planes on a routine training mission disappeared. You know, all those ships that sink there and those planes that crash there, it's probably because the material of their ship is so strong that it's like a magnet to the materials of planes and ships. And again, I don't have much evidence to back this up, but let's be honest. Humans have only discovered 5% of the ocean. What about the other 95%? Exactly. The truth would come out sooner or later and people are not ready for that one yet. Hey, that's the end of my story. I hope you read it because I don't want to be seen as crazy. Anyways, this is my story. Thank you very much for your channel. Stay safe and all. I ship your aunt and the aliens so hard. Yes. yes. If it was a girl alien, even more. Well, do aliens even have gender? Yeah, you're over here gendering them. They said he was the most handsome. Oh, what if they look like how you want them to look? Seven foot. Maybe she was like six foot two. That is crazy and I 100% believe you. I believe you too so bad. I literally cried. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> And I came to a theory that they're hiding. She feels like he erased her memory but left a little bit of it. Oh yeah, so he like, wouldn't forget. The only straight people I ship. Somebody write a Wattpad story and then tag me. Yeah, no, don't tag me. <laughs> Put me as the grandma, Normani as the alien. Do you all have a husband while you're seeing that guy in her dreams? Dude. Imagine cheating on your husband with the alien. I'm pretty sure that's happened. Remember when everybody was like, two weeks into a hot girl summer with my alien? That was your grandma. They that was your grandma. Alien. Her aunt. Wait, her. Oh, Why her aunt. Grandma? I thought it was grandma. I'm about to tell you someone else. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> I feel it! Don't put the parts where I was saying the alien thing was cute. I'm gonna leave it, Nelly. I'm just gonna think I'm gonna be telepathic. He doesn't watch this. Did he get it in? That's what I wanna know. Is this his mind? Why did you get thrust it on their head? No. No. <laughs> Thank you for sending in your story. I stand your aunt and the alien. Call Monica Cheesehead. I think that we all learned a very valuable lesson. Do not go hunting for aliens when you've got ghosts in your house. I just want to say thank you guys uh, for all the support, always. Also, somebody told me to keep politics out of my videos. And on that note, I just wanted to say that Black Lives Matter, abolish ICE, justice for Vanessa, and all the women that have been sexually assaulted in the military that have not gotten justice. Also wanted to mention that my friend's brother passed away. They need help. The GoFundMe link in the description if you guys can donate share send your love and prayers be safe wear your masks